Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Millington First United Methodist Church. As we come together on this Ash Wednesday, we stand ready to begin the Lenten season once again as we join Jesus on his journey to the cross and seek a deeper understanding of our faith and God's presence living among us. As we come together in worship, I invite you to stand and join me in our call to worship. We'll read responsibly. We gather together at the edge of a new season. We stand together on the cusp of something new. Will we wade into self-reflection? Will we invite honesty to dance? Will we listen for God's invitation? Will we seek deeper faith? What kind of fast do we choose? What kind of faith will we build? We gather together at the edge of a new season. Listen. God is speaking. I was about to say, we might not be singing a first hymn, but here she comes. <laughs> Our first hymn this evening is Lord, Whose Love Through Humble Service, can be found on page 581 in your United Methodist hymnal, or the words are projected on the screen. Join 
Jesus. loving God to mark the season of Lent, to begin the journey to the cross once again. We have gathered here to repent of our sins, publicly and privately. We come here to bring you our questions, O Lord. We come seeking many things, clarity and connection, new beginnings and better balance, answers and assurance. We have gathered here to be in the presence of one another as the body of Christ, where we can draw strength and comfort, for you are here with us. We come ready to carry our cross, to put to death those things that separate us from each other and from you. Guide us throughout these 40 days as we journey deeper into our questions and deeper into your embrace of mercy. Lord, may we know your presence is always with us. The power of your transformative love lives within us. The grace of Jesus Christ surrounds us all of our days. With Christ as our companion on this journey, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12, where God calls us to true worship and fasting from injustice. Hear now the words of God through the prophet Isaiah. Shout loudly and don't hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their crime, to the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, desiring knowledge of my ways, like a nation that acted righteously, that didn't abandon their God. They ask me for righteous judgments, wanting to be close to God. Why do we fast and you don't see? Why afflict ourselves and you don't notice? Yet on your fast day, you do whatever you want and oppress all your workers. You quarrel and brawl and then you fast, you hit each other violently with your fists. You shouldn't fast as you are doing today if you want to make your voice heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I choose? A day of self-affliction, of bending one's head like a reed, of lying down in mourning clothing and ashes. Is this what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I choose? Releasing wicked restraints, Untying the ropes of a yoke, setting free the mistreated, and breaking every yoke. Isn't it sharing your bread with the hungry, and bringing the homeless poor into your house, covering the naked when you see them, and not hiding from your own family? Then your light will break out like the dawn, and you will be healed quickly. Your own righteousness will walk before you, and the Lord's glory will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and God will say, I'm here. 
If you remove the yoke from among you, the finger pointing, the wicked speech, if you open your heart to the hungry and provide abundantly for those who are afflicted, your light will shine in the darkness and your gloom will be like noon. The Lord will guide you continually and provide for you even in parched places. He will rescue your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water that won't dry, won't run dry. They will rebuild ancient ruins on your account. The foundations of generations past you will restore. You will be called mender of broken walls, restorer of livable streets. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Will you pray with me and will you pray for me? Holy God, we come tonight because we want to hear your voice, and so we ask you to shout loudly and not hold back. God, move in our spirits the way you moved over the waters of creation. We are beginning a new season today, Lord, and we don't want to begin anything without you. So speak to us today, God of mercy. Speak to us through silence through scripture, through song. Speak to us as you spoke to the Israelites so many moons ago. Speak to us like a gentle breeze or like a loud trumpet. We don't <coughs> hear, Lord, just as long as we hear your voice. So don't hold back, for we are here, and we are listening. As we wait, God of grace, Draw me beneath the shadow of the cross that what is heard today are not my words, but yours. And what is felt in all of our hearts are not our own desires, but your will, O oh God. For you and you alone are our strength and our redeemer. With hope we pray. Amen. As we hear these challenging words from the prophet Isaiah today, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The way we see faith and God's vision of a faithful life, well, it may be different. We may not see exactly the way God sees. The people of Isaiah's day cried out to God, asking, Lord, don't you see how good we are being? How we're trying to follow you? Don't you see our sacrifice, our worship, our fasting, our praying? Lord, do you see? But God answers the people with a vision not of faithfulness that equates to acts of worship. Instead, God answers with a vision of faith that looks like lives changed. Faith that looks like justice being done. Faith that looks like bread bring, being shared with the hungry. Isaiah and his difficult questions reveal to us this uncomfortable truth. For our vision of faith to match God's vision of faith, you and I, we may need to change our perspective. So where do we begin then? On this day where we come to fast, to seek reconciliation with God, to ask for forgiveness for our sins, to start a new season, where do we begin this change of perspective on faith? The Reverend Sarah Speed describes it in this way. Sarah writes, So often, faith is portrayed as something you have or you don't have. Either you are strong in faith or you're knee-deep in doubt. It's one or the other. This black and white way of thinking fits with our society's obsession with choosing sides. However, Sarah continues, it doesn't fit with my experience of faith. For me, faith has always been an experience of seeking, seeking God in the world, seeking the good, seeking a deeper truth. Sarah says, I seek my way through prayer. I seek my way into scripture. I am forever cobbling together memories and feelings and questions and experiences 
all in an effort to see God more clearly. As we come together today on Ash Wednesday, I'm reminded that when we look at the worship we offer to God today, when we look at the message of this particular moment in the life of our faith, Ash Wednesday really is an odd Christian holiday, isn't it? I explained to our youth last week as they helped prepare the ashes for this evening as we set the palms from last Palm Sunday on fire and watched them wither into ash. I explained to them, Ash Wednesday is kind of like a goth Christian day. Because at its heart, the message is, one day we are all going to die. None of us, none of us is getting out of this world alive. I remember as a child growing up in the church that I looked forward to Ash Wednesday in an odd way. I'm not sure I could place my finger on it why I waited for this day every year to come around on the calendar. But in retrospect, as I come to this season of Lent, where so little in life in our church, in our world, seems certain, perhaps Ash Wednesday captured my heart because of this. Ash Wednesday is honest. In a world where certainty is scarce, Ash Wednesday stands and says, here's what we know. We are dust, and to dust we will return. But what continues to draw me to Ash Wednesday, what draws me to contemplate my mortality, what draws me to linger and spend time in this place where we usually avoid stepping, in this place where we would not naturally go, what draws me to this moment is this. From the certainty of my death springs forth hope. Hope that this life matters because it's precious, that its brevity is beautiful, that in this brief span, as I search my heart before God, I might find meaning and discover deep faith. Ash Wednesday can change our perspective in life, can't it? We can come to this moment and say, yes, we are mortal, we are feeble, we are finite, but we belong to God. Yes, we are dust, but don't you know God makes beautiful things from dust? God's questions to the people in Isaiah, they offer a changing perspective too. God doesn't go easy on us in this passage from the prophet, does he? God poses difficult, searching questions that force us to dig deep and to ask questions about ourselves, about our lives, about our choices, questions about our communities, questions about the problems of the world around us. When we see injustice and suffering in the world, in our neighborhood, it's tempting to want to blame someone else, to blame them, whoever them is, for the problems that we see. But in this passage of scripture, on this honest day, God comes to us and he poses these questions that invite us to be more honest and to turn inward and introspection. God asks us to think about the places where our action or inaction have caused harm. God asks us in this moment, from this place of scripture, from the prophet, to think about when we have been a witness to the pain of the world, but still we remained a bystander, unwilling to put ourselves on the front lines of responding to the brokenness around us with healing, with comfort, with peace. Really, God is inviting us today to ask ourselves, do our actions really, day to day, moment to moment, do our actions really match the beliefs that we profess? Isaiah brings us difficult questions from God, but I believe difficult questions can lead to deeper faith. This Lent, we're inviting ourselves, our community, to a spiritual practice of seeking. To reflect on life as we know it, and to realize that though we might wish, 
that the world around us was black and white, that it was so clear what was right or what was wrong, that we could know who was responsible for suffering and injustice. Instead, our questions invite us to move into that gray area, the gray area of real life, of reality, the gray area that asks questions like, how can ancient scriptures still be so relevant to our lives today if God is moving? Questions like, how have we, God's people, not fixed the problems of the world yet, if we truly believe? Questions like, what are we meant to do with our lives, with these precious moments that are like a blink of an eye? The question that leads to a journey like, where is God calling us to go in this moment, right now? Ash Wednesday begins our faith journey of Lent. And in this moment, we might discover that we start from this one place where we know for certain two things. Jesus loves us, and our life in this world will one day end. And in the in-between, Jesus invites us into a journey of seeking, of seeking what it means to live out our faith, of sometimes getting it right and sometimes getting it wrong, but continuing to seek God through questions and searching each and every day, knowing that God is never done with us. In this spiritual practice of seeking, of asking questions, of wondering out loud what God is up to in our lives, in our hearts, in our community, in our world, I'm afraid to tell you that we won't necessarily discover clear or easy answers to the questions that life brings our way. But we can be sure that in our seeking, in our prayerful, earnest search, that we will meet God. God doesn't leave Isaiah and the people on a sour note of difficult questions in today's passage. No, at the end of the passage, God gives us a hope for the future. God promises when worship and justice meet in our daily lives, when our actions reflect the love and grace of God that we have discovered in Jesus Christ, then, the prophet says, then light breaks forth into the world around us, bringing healing and restoration, where all people have what it takes to live, and all of us together can experience the abundance of God's mercy. As we seek hope, we come here tonight on Ash Wednesday, and we discover we cannot change the world by changing other people. And so this journey is one of turning inward and realizing we can change the world by changing ourselves, by changing our perspective, by allowing God to work through us through uncomfortable but honest questions. So as we seek God together through our questions in these 40 days, may we discover God's vision for hope and faith that dwell deeply within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the anthem that the choir just beautifully offered is entitled, We Seek You With Our Questions, God. And the last line, the last verse that the choir sang, promises us that God meets us in questions. I invite you to reflect upon these words. God, you seek us with your questions. God, inviting us to dare to know you and to love you more, to grow through act and prayer. Who will you trust and follow now? My truth is all around. You seek us with your questions, God. You seek and we are found. We can trust that we are found in God's love and mercy. And as we come to confess our sins to God, both privately and together as a community, we know that we find forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. Our passage from Isaiah tells a story of people who are trying hard. They're trying hard to be faithful. And they ask, God, do you notice? Do you see all the good we're doing? Are you proud of us? Their questions, they might sound a little bit like parent or children seeking their parents' attention. When a child asks, did I do a good job? In those moments, when we ask God, we always want to hear God say, of course, excellent job, good and faithful servant. But in today's scripture, God says to the people, I want you to seek justice. Friends, faith is this constant dance of us asking God, am I doing it right, and how can I do better? In the prayer of confession and worship, we linger in that tension for a moment. We acknowledge that we are works in progress, and we ask for God's help and mercy. God may challenge us, but fortunately, God will never abandon us. So let us turn to God in prayer, using the confession printed in our bulletin and visible on the screen. Let us pray responsively. <coughs> Merciful God, how many times in a day could we choose love? How many times could we choose justice? How many times could we speak kindly to ourselves? How many times could we offer grace? How many times, God, and how often do we miss it? Forgive, Forgive us for choosing the path we did not travel. Forgive us for hitching our horse to the world's measure of goodness instead of yours. Return our hearts to you and guide us continually, even in the parched places. With gratitude, we pray. Amen. Family of Faith. When a baby is learning to walk, the parents do not criticize the baby for falling. Instead, they celebrate every wobbly step. They applaud every hesitant stand. They whoop and holler when their child lands in their arms. Surely the same must be true of God. Although we often lose our way, and we often choose the wrong thing, I imagine God cheers us on, whoops and hollers every time we take a step in God's direction. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel this evening, that no matter how many times we fall, no matter how many times we choose the wrong path, God is waiting for us at the end with open arms. We are forgiven. We are invited. We belong. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Friends, in a few moments, you'll be invited to come forward and to receive the sign of the cross and ashes on your forehead or on your hand. In these ashes, we are reminded of our mortality, of our life that will end but will never be lost in God's love. And we're reminded of our need for forgiveness, to seek mercy at the feet of Christ, and that each time we seek mercy and try again, God cheers us on in the direction of love and justice and hope. So as you come, may you remember in God's promise of everlasting life and find mercy at the feet of Jesus.
In a few moments, as I make my way to the front, I invite you to come as you feel led, as Debbie plays. And may you reflect on God's love for you this evening. God of 
of love the best you choose. The words are projected on the screen, or it's also an insert in your bulletin. Please stand if you're able. you wonder. May you find what you were looking for. <laughs> 